Today we are talking all about the medicinal compounds and how people use this mushroom. Well, it's not really a mushroom. I found it awesome. Sweet. As good as a medicinal, really good as a tinder. This is chaga. Humans have used chaga for thousands of years, but only recently has its popularity shined a light on the benefits of this incredible forest medicinal. It goes by many names, black gold, the diamond of the forest, and the mushroom of immortality. In China, it's considered the king of mushrooms. It was used traditionally all over the far north from Alaska to Siberia. In fact, the name is Russian. And if the hype is to be believed, well, this medicine is one of the more potent the forests here have to offer. And those are the claims I'm going to tackle in today's video. It's also why I'm wandering through this boreal birch forest in the far north of Wisconsin. Did you find one over there? Yeah, let's see. It look, look more like our aspirins. Now I've been drinking chaga for a while now, but given that I live in the south, I've had very little ability to document where it grows for all of you. So, I flew up here with my three friends. Greg, who leads the wilderness survival course we put on every year. Jonas, my Swedish friend, who is a biologist and some amazing cinematographer. And Hazen Adel, a longtime friend. We started all this together 13 years ago. He now hosts a show, you may have heard it, on Disney Plus called Primal Survivor. Definitely check that out. Hazen has the saw. I'm just gonna run with this. Might as well put it around your neck. Between the three of us, I thought we could probably find one of these chunks of black gold, chaga. The first step was to find birch trees, as chaga mostly grows on birch trees. There's a couple different types of birch out here. This is white birch. Two years ago, I made a fun video about birches, but the recap is that there are 16 different species in North America and over 60 worldwide. And if you live anywhere in this range, you can probably go outside at any point and find one near you. And if you play Minecraft, the birch trees there are based on this one, which grows in Sweden. The guy who kind of came up with the idea for Minecraft uh, was Swedish. Anyhow, birch trees have a lot of medicinal qualities in their own right. Uh, they also have a lot of resin in them, which makes them great for starting fires. All the stuff you can peel off is really good if you're having trouble starting a fire. They contain some compounds in them you may have heard, maybe not, called betulin and betulinic acid. They also contain, well, some of them, methyl salicylate. Smelly good, right? Oh, it tastes kind of good. That gives many of them a minty smell. I mention this because there are multiple medicinal mushrooms that grow on birches. One is the hoof fungus, used by the famous Iceman. The second is birch polypore, also found with Iceman and known to treat parasites. Birch polypore right here. We were looking for all of these mushrooms here in the forests. You did find birch polypore? They're here, is that what you're talking about? But what we were really looking for was chaga. Now chaga doesn't grow like any of these other polypores, which by the way are hard mushroom type structures on the trees. Instead, it's a black mass that most wouldn't even think twice about. They wouldn't even know it was a fungi. Finally, we found one high up in the trees. Well, it's a big one, big one up there, I think. And this is where you'll often find them, in part because if they're lower down, they're easily harvested. One of the problems with chaga is sometimes it's very high up, so it's good to bring a ladder if you're looking for chaga. What do you think that is? Luckily, the one up there wasn't the only one we came across. We actually found this one on a small birch. Oh, great! Right chaga! What do we got there, Greg? Chaga! Oh my gosh! My goal is I wanted to collect one to show you. And remember, if you're harvesting, it's wise to just take a piece of the hole so that the rest can continue to grow. In theory, there is mycelium throughout the tree already, especially in that area, but it's just generally a good practice when you're out foraging. Before I describe the beneficial compounds, let me just describe what you're looking at here. So this is the sclerotia. This is the black part. Um, a lot of people, when they're looking for the medicinal compounds, are looking at the black part. A lot of that is melanin, so that's one of the compounds in there. That's so great. And what's this so good for? Well, there's a lot of things that people use it for, but one of the best things is it's high in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a piece of chaga right here. You can see that this is actually a conch. There's a whole bunch of mycelium inside of this thing. And then it mixes with this birch tree. So birch trees have a lot of medicinal compounds and those are incorporated into the chaga. So it's really important to what this grows on. Greg also uses them in his wilderness survival trips. It's also really good as a tinder for making fires. So if you took your knife or somehow scraped out this brown powder, 
it'll ignite and stay lit for a long time. So if you lit this on fire, just how it is right now, it'd probably last all day. It would just smolder all day. Now let me describe the main benefits of this fungi. First, like many of the medicinal mushrooms, it has beta-glucans in the cell walls. Those are a type of immunoregulatory polysaccharide and stimulate the host's immune response to defend against bacteria, viruses, parasites, and other fungi. For you to get those out of the mushroom, you have to add hot water. Hot water breaks down the cell walls and it frees the beta-glucans. Next, they are known to have several compounds within them. Betulin, betulinic acid, inotodiol, lanosteriol, lanistane type triterpenoids, egosterol, peroxide, different polyphenols, and melanin, like in your skin. It's a little vague which of these compounds may be responsible for some of the beneficial effects of chaga. But here are a couple things we know chaga does. First, inflammation. A few studies have come out that point to chaga decreasing inflammation in mice as a way to help immune response. Cancer growth. Three more studies on mice and in test tubes indicated that chaga extracts reduced cancer growth and helped reduce the size of existing tumors. Antioxidant superfood. In addition to all of those studies, chaga here is an antioxidant superfood. Now, this is a little bit of a difficult chemistry topic, but I think it's worth going into just a little bit so you understand why this is actually good for you to have. Now, antioxidants, we all know are good, but why? Well, it's because through natural metabolism in the body, your body creates oxidative stress. Uh, it creates free radicals. Free radicals, it's a little bit of a chemical imbalance and it wants to pull electrons from things in your body. Those electrons could be pulled from DNA. That would not be good. That would damage the DNA. That could lead to aging. That could lead to cancers. So your body can correct that through antioxidants. Your body can naturally produce some chemicals that, that act to sweep that up or you can eat antioxidant rich foods. So it turns out scientists can actually measure the antioxidant value of different foods. And fruits and vegetables have tons of it. Vitamin A and vitamin E, carotenoids. Turns out that that value is the ORAC value. Just for comparison, let's throw up here a couple of values so you can see where chaga fits in. Over here, we have blackberries and blueberries. Then we have lentils, prunes, persimmons, acai berry, and then way over here, chaga. Look how big it is for chaga. <laughs> That's why they call chaga an antioxidant superfood. But just for reference, you have to understand how those ORAC values are calibrated. They're at 100 grams of any of the foods. So that's 100 grams of blueberries and blackberries and 100 grams of chaga. For reference, this is 190 grams. You wouldn't put that much into your tea or coffee. This is about one gram and that's all I would put into my coffee or tea. Still very high ORAC value. It turns out chaga is a great coffee substitute in part because it just tastes good. It had a, this amazing kind of sweet that is not like a sugar. Now, if you've got to this point, you need to understand the real risks that chaga presents if you're consuming it every day. And I'm gonna do that at the very end after I first introduce today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. Now I still drink coffee. In fact, I just add a little bit of the mushrooms to it, whether it's chaga, lion's mane, or cordyceps. And more recently, I've been trying different types of coffee through Trade Coffee, which is a coffee subscription service. And that just allows me to get a new one every week. It makes it really easy and convenient to discover new brands. I love it. Just unwrapped the coffee from this week. Um, here's last week's brand. Honestly, I had no idea there was so much diversity in coffee until I started this subscription service. We're gonna do a quick smell test for the last four that we got from Trade Coffee. Dark chocolate, I can smell that too. This is the one I like best. This smells so similar, but so different. Here. I, I think I kinda like this one the best. And right now, Trade is offering to Stone Age Man viewers a free bag with a subscription if you go to drinktrade.com slash stoneageman. Again, check out this offer at drinktrade.com slash stoneageman. Now back to chaga. Chaga does present a few risks and it has a lot to do with the amount of oxalates in it. Now oxalates are not really a problem for most people. Other things that have high oxalates include spinach and rhubarb. Uh, for most people, that's fine. Other people, oxalates in the urine combines with calcium to form kidney stones. If you've ever had a kidney stone, you know how painful that can be. In other words, if you know you're predisposed to this, 
then you probably should moderate your dose of chaga. Then again, just take that warning with a grain of salt because I looked it up, many texts cite this as an issue, but there have only been two documented cases worldwide. So what's the take home? Well, for me, I think you should probably try some chaga. Fairly low risk. You could argue still whether or not it has true medicinal value. You might even still be on the fence, but we know it has high antioxidants. And if you want to add those to your diet, then that actually seems like a good thing. It also tastes really good. So I use it as a little supplement to my coffee and tea. You might use it as a coffee substitute. If you do try it, let me know how you do it down in the comments below. So there you have it, a little bit about chaga. I hope you learned something. If you wanna learn more about medicinal or functional mushrooms, then I encourage you to go down to the playlist below because I have a whole bunch of them and we're exploring all of them. And thanks to Hazen, cool. as always, yeah. and to Greg. <laughs> all right, you guys, go. Let's uh, blow this popsicle fan. <laughs> And also, popsicles, the, the sticks are made out of birch, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah.